My name is Don Ingber. I'm a senior author with Akiko Momoto and Tata Momoto of an article that uh, is a review on the role of mechanical forces in uh, development and disease. And uh, it's a little unusual for, uh, for a biological review article because most of the work in the last 30 years is focused on genes and chemicals and hormones. Um, but uh, my lab is, has been working for 35 years or more on the key role that mechanical forces play. And what we found, really to cut to the nutshell, is, is that mechanical forces are as important for control of cell and tissue and organ development as chemicals and genes. And so we, we feel like this review, which we tried to make as expansive as possible, uh, provides a new perspective on how cells are regulated by physical cues from the environment. These are these are forces like shear stresses in blood vessels, um, blood pressure, but also um, when you move your arms or, or you have stretch of your skin and your muscles or gravity on bone and cartilage, but also down at the microscopic level, the forces that cells generate inside their cytoskeleton, the molecular framework of the cell, um, that those are equally important in regulating cell and tissue behaviors. So all cells have this cytoskeletal framework, which contains actomyosin filaments, which are, are the same actomyosin filaments that we all have in our muscles when we contract our muscles. And when cells contract, they pull on their adhesions to other cells and to the extracellular matrix on which they adhere. That's the in vivo anchoring scaffold. I like to think of it as an egg carton on which the cells sit like eggs. because the matrix orients the cells and, and pr provides basically a scaffold for their orderly renewal and repair. And so in this article, we, we actually start at the beginning of development from fertilization of the egg all the way through the divisions of the cells in the early embryo to the formation of the first tissues and organs to the, the morphogenesis, the gener generation of form of the particular tissues and organs, and then how tissue architecture is maintained throughout adult life, and how um, mechanical forces actually govern some of the major, major control points at all of those stages, and then how when the mechanical sensing and transduction systems, we call it mechanotransduction, how mechanical signals are converted to a chemical response, how that system sometimes can become deregulated, you actually can get disease. Examples of uh, mechanical forces uh, in, in development. Um, we've done work in, in our lab recently where we found, for example, that um, the, the formation of a whole organ, in this case a tooth, you don't think of it as an organ, but a tooth actually has different tissues within it that interface, uh, lining cells called epithelial cells, and then uh, mesenchymal connective tissue cells, fibroblast-like cells on the opposite side that start out as a simple bud off the lining epithelium in the mouth, in, in the embryo, and then this bud buds out, so there's a little, uh, uh, the bud sticking out, and then it buds in on itself, so it forms two little fingers downward, which are the roots, and that's all of morphogenesis in that tooth. Blood vessels come in, nerves come in, the tooth, the epithelium differentiates into the hard enamel and dentin of the outer covering of the tooth, and in the, for 20 years, people have been working out all of the genes and the morphogens, the chemicals and factors that regulate the steps that go from that initial bud to a tooth. But no one really understands how it works. And what we found, and this is just one example, is that the, the, the cells that are on the upper layer, the epithelium, the lining cells, put out two different factors. One induce cells to migrate towards the the, un, the matrix on which they sit. So the cells beneath are induced to migrate upwards towards the, the, the epithelium. And then, and that's at a very gentle gradient. So cells all the way in the distance are starting to march towards it. And at the same time, the same cells produce out a factor that's a repulsive factor that basically tells the cells that are coming close to turn away. And this causes the cells to compact, to, to crowd together. It's called mesenchymal condensation. And this is known for, for probably 50, 100 years that there's a mesenchymal condensation as a first step before most organs form.
And in fact, the shape and size of that condensation can affect organ size and shape. And what we found is that that physical compaction, the compression of cells tightly packed, is enough to trigger the transcription factors that induce all of the differentiation steps that lead to tooth. And, and, we, and you could actually take this undifferentiated connective tissue cells and physically squish them between two pieces of rubber and they can then be induced to go all the way to a tooth when combined with the epithelium. So that, that's a, a, a case where all the genes and chemicals that people mapped out are indeed correct, but the genes encode for these motility factors, which then manifest their activity, their form-inducing or organ generation-inducing activity, um, through inducing a physical change in the microenvironment. And then once the cells experience that, you don't need the factors anymore. So I think um, th th there, are, there are many other examples in, in, the, um, in the review, but I, I think the important message is that we need to take into account physical forces, physical cues in the environment. The, we need to um, develop model systems to be able to perturb those physical cues, control them as a separate variable to really begin to understand developmental control.